Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 731. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about if you're thinking about moving because so many people are reconsidering where they live and they're thinking, do I need to live where I live? Do I need to pay these incredibly high prices for my home? Do I need to pay state income taxes that I'm paying? Or is my company going to let me work from home, maybe in the suburbs or maybe even in another state? People are really reconsidering and thinking a lot about where they live. I even find myself thinking about where do I want to live? I think the pandemic has done that to all of us. We're reconsidering everything. And honestly, we're sort of in that survival mode where we're thinking about food, shelter, and water. We're down to the basics and really thinking about what kind of life do we want and where do we want to live? Recently, I was talking with a friend of mine who is in New York City. And she hasn't been out of her apartment in 11 weeks. She's got twin three-year-old boys. And it's been very challenging to not have a yard or have a place where they can go out and play. And she's thinking the older they get, the worse it's probably going to get. So rethinking, does she need to live in New York City? Well, actually, she doesn't need to live there for her job. She could move somewhere else. Most of her work is done in consulting over the phone. So these are the kinds of things that people are re-examining and re-evaluating. So that's what we're gonna talk about today is what to think about, how to prepare for it, and just to maybe get you down the road in that process. If that's something you're thinking about, but it's feeling a little bit scary, a little bit like you're not sure what to do, you're not sure the first steps to take, or even if you're really serious about it. So I think one of the very first things to do is look at your priorities. What is it that is most important to you? Is it about your kids playing outside or the schools that your children go to? Is it about quality of life? Is it about safety and feeling safe? Is it about having access to food and water? Do you need your own water supply? A lot of people are really thinking about going back to basics. They're thinking about maybe doing some farming and having a well. I've heard all kinds of ideas that people are considering and thinking about and reevaluating their lifestyle. Some people want to get out of the large cities. Some people want to get away from paying high taxes and others just from the very high housing costs to something more reasonable and more affordable since maybe now their employer has some flexibility with where they live. So maybe as a way to start, you might want to read up on some articles about different towns, different sizes of cities that you want to live in. Look at what articles have been written about cities that you're thinking of or cities that are the size you want or cities that have the priorities that you're looking for. So for example, if you're looking for smaller cities, you could do some searches for the best small towns to live in. And if you know it's in a particular geographic part of the country, you can say in the South or in the West or in the Northeast or in the Northwest or in the Midwest. Put those in your searches and see what comes up. A lot of times there have been articles on the most livable cities, but it also can depend on your age. So if you're closer to retirement, there are articles for people in that demographic. If you're a younger person with younger children, 
There are articles for that demographic. So make sure to put in your parameters of your demographics in your search as well so that the search engine can come up with some suggestions for you too. Then I think the next thing is to go to Zillow and start searching on Zillow. Once you've narrowed it down to some towns you're interested in, you can enter those towns in your search bar on Zillow and you can start searching for different price ranges of homes, different features of homes. This is the phase where you wanna really dream and not have any kind of a commitment. Just take a look around. Looking is free, you're not committed to anything, and it's kind of fun just to see what's out there and what's available and compare one city to another. Remember, when you're moving from a state with a state income tax to a state that doesn't have a state income tax, that's an automatic raise because you're not having to pay that extra tax. So consider those states that don't have any state income taxes. The next thing you wanna do is consider what is really important to you. You wanna look into things like, what is the weather like all year round? How cold does it get in the winter? One of my friends has a great home in Idaho, but it's 40 degrees below zero in the winter. In the summer, it's gorgeous. So it might be a great area for a second home, or it might be a great area if you like lots of winter sports and really cold temperatures don't bother you, but you need to consider that sometimes there are extreme swings in temperature. And think about what kind of lifestyle you like. Do you prefer to hike or go skiing or do you wanna be near the beach? And then you wanna consider social priorities like are you going to be near other people with kids your age or are you going to be near people that are your age or are you going to have extra acreage and land that you'd like? Think about your demographics, your lifestyle, and what your priorities are for just the social aspect and kind of what's on your wish list. Then the next step might be to plan a vacation there. Go and stay in an Airbnb actually check it out and see what it's like to stay in or near the town that you're considering moving to. And while you're there, contact a realtor and take a look at some homes. Actually tour some of the homes that are available and for sale. And just in case, before you go, make sure that you've already pre-qualified for a mortgage, you have a down payment available, and your credit score is in good shape. You never know when you're gonna find that perfect house and you're gonna walk in and want to make an offer. And in case there's more than one offer, you want to be set up in a good position to be the one that wins that particular house and wins the auction situation. So I think it's very exciting that people are thinking about moving, about downsizing, about changing their lifestyle. This is the perfect time to do that. It's a great time to sell in some of these larger cities and maybe you just rent a house here or there and try some different cities. Don't have a huge commitment, but see what it's like to live in a coastal town or to live in the South. If you're coming from New York or you're coming from San Francisco or Los Angeles, that could be a huge change. So before making a more permanent commitment, I would suggest that you really try it out and give it a trial period before making a huge commitment. This trend was already in place before the pandemic, and since the pandemic, people are really thinking seriously about their lifestyles, where they really wanna live, whether the state income taxes are worth it, or if they can keep their job and move to a less expensive place. With mortgage rates so low, it does make this an attractive time to look at purchasing something new. So I hope I gave you some good ideas of some things to look for and to think about before making a big financial commitment. Your house is usually your biggest expenditure, so you wanna do a lot of thinking and research and checking it out before making any long-term decisions. But all in all, it can be a great financial decision if you can keep your high-paying job and increase your quality of life and substantially reduce your expenses, well, that's a win-win-win all the way around. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be updated as soon as new podcasts are available so you never miss one. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. 
Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.